And he just he stayed alive for me. And I just said, Father God, save him or fucking let him die. And we took him in he died. So I jumped in bed next to him, gave him a couple of punches in the fucking face. I went, remember when I was young and dad used to give me a little whack? Fucking there's a couple of back and then stuck the head but a um, little one for a laugh and just fucking lied next to him for about 45 an hour and then rang me family too. He's gone. But before we get into the episode, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on. So your dad, I understand, was away a lot when you were younger. He used to, used to go away and he also didn't come to that many of your games. What was your relationship with your dad and oh, how was it growing couldn't up? couldn't get any closer. Yeah. Yeah, I did everything, right? Even when I went for a walk, I'd like fucking, he come to Bournemouth to see you for, he said, I'll come see you for a couple of weeks. I went, okay, Dad, fucking six months later. Dad, when are you going to go back home? I'll be all right, here, son. But then he, he did, I don't know, he just didn't, he, I think he suffered a little, like myself from a uh, claustrophobic and he didn't like lifts and not, and I think being around a lot of people, but and then, um, when I when I went to Italy, he wasn't fucking daft. He says, I'm coming to Italy for a couple of weeks. So I says, yeah, okay, Dad, no problem. Fucking hell. Then two years later, Dad, are, are you all right? He says, I fucking loved it. He says, I'm, I'm coming to the game as well. So he saw coming to the game at Lazio because I had security and that. And it was okay. Um, yeah, but because there was no work, my dad worked abroad, it was like, you know, off with, off with his pet. He was a hot carrier, my dad. So right. he worked abroad in Germany. And he used to send back my mum and money and that. And then when I was seven, he, he come back home and he said, I've got a present for you. And he gives me first leather football. Wow. And that's when I fucking start dribbling everywhere with it, you know. Mm. So, but yeah, he worked so hard. And then obviously he fucking, he was one of the hardest men in Newcastle. I used to headbutt everyone in the end of the fucking looking enough I was off school. And, and I just hear yeah, my mum saying, Paul, quick, quick. I don't know, my dad's eyes were rolling. So I put your fingers in his mouth quick and I put my fucking finger, look at one still bent now. Stop him for so swallowing his tongue, he had a brain tumor. So he was in the hospital for eight months. And so they opened him up and that, and he used to have these bad turns, and I always be next to him. But then I, t I went everywhere with him. I must have bought him 80 cars, fucking three boats, fucking mobile homes, fucking everything, fucking jewelry. He's got it, my watches, fuck knows. I remember once, he was Lampton. He said, I'm coming to the game. He says, yeah, fuck it, I know too fucking right you are. He knew, I just bought this, there's only three in the country, I bought this new fucking Mercedes soft top, 230, and this new fucking watch with 70 grand. And I showed him it and that, and so, he says, what are you not drinking for, son? I said, nah, I'm not having a drink, Dad, I'm all right. He says, get yourself a whiskey, man. And I says, no, nah, you sure, Dad? He says, go on. So I'm having a whiskey with Dad. He says, get yourself another one. I said, right, Dad, I'm fucking going to bed now. He says, all right, son, sleep well. Cheers. I look up and I wake up and I look and I just see me fucking watch is gone. I went, bastard. <laughs> so he fucking got me watch. <laughs> so I went, Oh, fuck, no, please. And I just went and looked, opened the curtains of the car park. No car. <laughs> He's fucked off of both of them. Just took him? Yeah, just took him. I just let him in. He <laughs> fucking bastard. He went, fuck me, Dad, you got me watch and my fucking car. He went, the main now. You shouldn't have had a drink. I said, you fucking give us a drink. You know, well, it had to be done, didn't it? I said, what do you do with the car? He said, I may sell it. So he used to buy cars, sell them, buy a second hand one and keep, keep, put the rest of the money in the bank. He wow. Be 40 me watches. Fucking hell. He's fucking, I love him. <laughs> yeah, I did anything with my dad. Yeah. So when I go home in Newcastle, he's just going to stay in his, his spare room and that. Yeah. And just sit with him, put his bets on. Saturday, I fucking miss him more than anything. Yeah, Saturday, I miss him more than anything. Mm. When he was dying, I quickly left Ebenen. I was living, getting home quickly, and um, told my family to leave his dish for me and my dad, and he was like, <laughs> and he just he stayed alive for me. And I remember just looking like that and fucking breathing, and I just said, Father God, two seconds, either save him or fucking let him die. And two minutes later, he died. He died. 
So I jumped in bed next to them, gave them a couple of punches in the fucking face. I went, remember when I was young your dad and you used to give me a little whack? Fucking there's a couple of whack and then stuck the headbutt on um, a little one for a laugh and just fucking lied next to them for 45 an hour and then rang me family at 6 o'clock and went, hey, he's, he's gone. And then they put him in this police chapel thing where he's thinking, I went, no, no fucking putting him in a chapel. Take him fucking out there, get him in the coffin, do him up and fucking get him home. I'm going to stay with him. So he just I stayed with him for three days. So weird as well because I left the coffin door open for him and I played these songs I used to like. And I went upstairs, I thought, wait, and just tidied up his room and that. Um, because obviously he passed away. And at the end of the bed, you have one of these puffy things and his wash bag and that, but it was there in the bag. And I was fucking in the cupboard and just went, whoosh, moved about two foot off this thing, flung, and I went, fuck off, Dad, will you? So I went to bed and I said, fucking, I could hear noises. And I think, fuck me, he's hanging about somewhere. And I'd go back down and make sure he's still in the coffin. I think, fucking hell. Yeah, so it was... Yeah, and then that's it. And then eventually I said to the family, like, you come around and see him. Mm. Yeah. And wow. Because all my family live in the same street next door to each other. I bought them all a house next door to each other. So I fucking know if I'm was, when I'm, uh, I'm in trouble, I get it from all of them. And I know anyway I'm fucked. Because as soon as I go and I see my dad's curtains shut, that's it. I look across, sister's curtains shut, mom's are shut, brother's shut, other sister's are shut. I went, they must have knew I was coming. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Taxi, please. Take us back to fucking Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very close to me, Dad. Yeah. Took him everywhere. If you'd like to watch the full, unfiltered interview, watch it here. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, 